So I'm almost having to choose like, do I love where I work and I wanna stay there or do I need time with my child and with my husband? And it feels like a really hard choice. It feels like an impossible choice. Silicon Valley has more jobs than homes, so housing costs soar, pushing workers out of the area. Why should we all care? Well, traffic congestion, long waits for services, and trouble staffing businesses. We say, if you work hard, you'll have a home and time for your family. But for many, teachers, first responders, and service workers, that promise is a dream. Here are their stories. And so over time, it's gotten tremendously worse. Um, where I used to previously be able to travel from, he from San Francisco to Mountain View or San Francisco Los Altos in a half hour, 40 minutes, my commute now is typically an hour uh, in the morning. And in the evening, if I'm going only from Los Altos to San Francisco, my commute is typically an hour and 15 to hour and a half. I'm in the car on average each day, at least an hour and a half to two hours. That's if I've like left um, at the times I'm hoping to leave and, and that's just like not counting weather or something on the road. My commute to Los Altos is a quite long commute, um, taking anywhere from three to three and a half hours a day. I mean, just one way. So my commute uh, from the East Bay, um, so I did it for about two and uh, a quarter years while I worked here, um, was um, in the morning time I would get up about 5.15, uh, try to go as quickly as possible, leave the house by 5.45, uh, but there would still be cars on the road at that time. So um, sometimes I would kind of wake up early, either worrying about the commute or wake up early because my uh, our baby was crying. And sometimes even if it was four in the morning or 3.30 in the morning, I would just get up and go because then at least uh, there'd be no cars on the road. One of the things that's most tragic is we have environmental service workers, we have uh, food service workers, we have CNAs, and many of them use public transportation and some of them commute uh, two hours, three hours a day um, just to get to work. As uh, merchants are looking for workers, uh, it, it's tough to find them. One, there are a lot of jobs out there, which is great for the economy. Uh, however, people want to work where they, uh, where they live usually. Uh, and having folks uh, to commute in to do that can be a problem and then the high cost of living in, in anywhere in the Bay Area but particularly here uh, can preclude uh, workers uh, you know office workers and restaurant workers from actually living in the area. My workforce is diverse I have about 50 percent of my workforce that are the primary wage earners and 50 percent that are not. For those that are the primary wage earners, it is very stressful. There's, they're looking at creative housing solutions. Many of them have second jobs. They're doing sh shared housing, and they are trying to always find ways to be able to maximize whatever um, income they can to just go that little bit further. So I had to find somewhere myself that I was able to afford, which was very difficult, um, and there's still there are just not a lot of options in that regard, so, yeah. For my housing, I, I don't feel like I have a lot of good alternatives. I've been in my building for 10 years, and in that time, in the past four years, I've seen the rent go up almost $700 a month, um, just in the past four or five years. Yeah, the, the high cost of housing is impacting the retention of, of quality teachers in that we will hire teachers and we will put a lot of effort and money and time into training them. And then at the end of one or two years, once the realization is set in that this is the reality of our home buyer situation in this area, we lose those teachers. And so I decided to move Mountain View. Um, I originally only had one roommate. Um, I have a two bedroom apartment, so we were each had our own room. Um, it's now gotten to the point where I have three roommates in the same two bedroom apartment um, that I've lived in for four years. 
in the long term, we can't stay in Sunnyvale. My husband and I rent a two bedroom apartment with another couple because we can't afford to live on our own. Um, but I'm 30 and I would like to have kids and settle down and live with my husband without housemates. But unfortunately, since our rent has been raised twice and I think those two rent raises equaled up to $1,200 a piece, we're gonna have to move um, in order to actually save for a home. Workforce housing is a huge issue for us. Um, rents have gone way high, um, too high for some of our employees. Uh, they sometimes travel many, many miles uh, to, to get to work um, and to get home. Um, so between the lack of workforce, affordable workforce housing for our employees um, and the traffic, the commute, um, both things combined have, has been a real challenge for us to try to have employees uh, you know, come and work for us at El Camino Hospital. Five years ago when we were offering positions, the majority of people took our position right away, accepted within 24 hours, and now we're finding that when we make offers, um, applicants are sitting on the offers, they're considering their options, and we have lost a number of teachers due to the commute and the high cost of housing. Um, so as I started to work there, I found that you know everything that attracted me uh, to the school when I was looking at it and investigating and applying there was was true. I mean the the students, the student body is, is um, just fantastic. It's, it's diverse. The administration is very solid. Uh, the, uh, the other staff members are great. Um, uh, the community is is great. So everything about it was just um, overall fantastic. And then when I got permanent status after two years, it was almost this weird feeling of I I almost became more kind of down and depressed and tired and I had no idea why at the start of my third year I'm like what is wrong with you you have permanent status now you have you can now work at this place you really want to work at um, and I think one day I realized on the commute home of course that oh it's because now I'm realizing that this is kind of hitting home that you're gonna have to do this drive uh, every day for the next 30 years like you're gonna hit this wall of traffic uh, on 880 North um, every day for the next, you know, however long, and um, it's just gonna get worse year after year. So I just, I think I just became exhausted thinking about the future. Um, I know of three teachers in the last year who've left Los Altos um, in order to live in a more affordable community elsewhere in the state or elsewhere actually outside of the state as well. Um, so we are losing experienced, qualified teachers because there is no housing here that they're able to access. Um, we need to have our caregivers close to us. We have a lot of patients that we have to uh, take care of. And um, we, can't, we can't have people living, um, a lot of people on call, we can't have people living three hours away <laughs> that are being on call. So we have a significant issue that we have to start to um, correct. The impact is just not on Linden Tree, it's on the community. So for instance, because I have to have an incredibly flexible work schedule for all of my staff to accommodate all their various needs, I can't just arbitrarily say, yay, we'll stay open till nine o'clock tonight to support an event. Our events and our community outreach are the two things that have suffered the greatest because of the impact of what I have to do to retain staff and keep that flexibility for them to have a balanced life. So for instance, I can no longer really offer a community venue. Um, we have had to cut back on events. You, you can't participate uh, perhaps in, in school life, either with student, you know, um, kind of seeing what the students are up to or uh, participating in, you know, bettering the school, you know, doing things after school, um, I don't know, volunteering or participating in various initiatives going on at school because when the bell rings, you just, um, you have to hit the road, otherwise it just gets worse and worse. Um, and so um, I think your mind is also, even during work, sometimes your mind is kind of thinking about how is this commute gonna be? Um, I hope I have enough energy to make it home alive. Uh, and, um, and yeah, and when you come home, you're 
obviously not as fresh, you are tired, you don't feel like doing more work or bettering the curriculum even if you, you want to. Um, so it, it, affects, um, it affects your work life in various ways. social life. Um, to be quite frank, I live, I eat, breathe, I live, I sleep school. I hop out of bed at 5.15. Sometimes I sleep in until 6. Um, and I leave the house at 6.15. Um, and I can get to Oak at 6.45 to 7.15 depending on traffic. And it's me and the janitor in the morning or the morning crew. By the time you get home in the, in the evening at 6 6.15, 6.30, uh, usually you're exhausted. Uh, so you need, I need at least a, a half hour or 45 minutes to kind of regenerate a little. Uh, by then, it's usually 7, 7.15. Uh, any connections I could have made with friends uh, after work or, or have been, are gone, they're eliminated. I don't get home till seven or later and then um, I have to cook dinner, and then um, I've been trying to get up and go to the gym in the morning, feel good, but that means I have to go to bed early, so I really don't have that much time once I get home, um, especially if I'm cooking or I have some sort of chores. I usually don't meet up with friends on weeknights because there's just no time. For a while, I wanted to take classes after work, like I, um, I wanted to take a college course or take classes downtown, but I can't make it to downtown. Most of them start at 6.30. There's no way I could make it downtown by 6.30. I mean, I just think about all the lost time I'm going to have with my toddler at home. We're going to spend a lot of time in the car, um, probably a lot of personal like me time that I tend to have now. Um, I can exercise after work and I'm not going to have that time anymore with the commute. So I'm almost having to choose like, do I love where I work and I want to stay there or do I need time with my child and with my husband? And it feels like a really hard choice. It feels like an impossible choice. In all that time commuting, I give up a lot of time that could be used for studying. I'm a part-time student, so about an hour each way has two hours roughly where I would be losing out on study time. A retention issue as well. People are continuously leaving the area um, and living either closer uh, to a place where they can afford to live. Um, and that's really where we've been, we've been losing um, quite a few employees. About 30% of our employees leave the area, relocate out of the area, um, which is not something that's very significant to us. We have to try to replenish our employees um, with a very limited labor pool because our labor pool, of course, is also decreasing with nursing shortages, et cetera. So we have our hands full. In five years from now, I don't specifically see myself living here uh, in Los Altos. Uh, currently, I'm going to school and studying for a position in like CAD drafting. So wherever the job opportunities are at is where I'm going to go. and I don't really suspect there would be many job opportunities here in Los Altos. I'm expecting the commute to only get worse and not better. Um, I don't think I could handle it getting much worse than it is now. Uh, part of the reason for me to get my master's is, is to open up other opportunities, hopefully. Um, I doubt an MPA will give me the salary in Los Altos to be able to stay here because the cost of living is so prohibitive. I love working at Los Altos High School. I would like to work there for the entirety of my career, um, as would probably every single person who left the school. It is not by choice. We love our students. The administration is phenomenal. Um, it is the best school I've worked at by far. Um, the community is fantastic as well but it's just not feasible um, when I look at what I want for my life and the fact that I want a family um, and to be eventually able to build or to buy a home um, in the area where I work. So in five years, I'd like to still be working at the Los Altos Library. Um, I love this community. I know all the teens who come to the library. I love working with them. They're great kids. I love my coworkers. 
Um, I love the a lot of parts of my job. I've been here long enough that I've kind of accumulated duties I like. So I really love where I am and I don't want to move. It would probably have to be something really catastrophic happening involving my housing that would cause me to move. In the next five years, if I do have to end up uh, commuting longer because that's where I'm able to find a home, um, that would be really difficult for me because I'd have to give up a lot of the outside activities that I really enjoy um, in terms of being an educator. Uh, it, being able to interact with kids, uh, I'm a advisor for the Haiti Solidarity Club, for instance, and we do a lot of stuff after school, um, we do a lot of stuff at lunch, um, and it would just be impossible to be doing that commute and still being able to do something like that. At that point, if I'm not even able to engage in a lot of the activities that I really love with students, I would probably look to teaching somewhere else, whether it be in this area, um, or like I mentioned earlier, if I were to move to another state where um, it's just overall much more affordable. Um, I want to retire a kindergarten teacher. I want to be here. I'm here for the long haul. Um, I love this district. I love this community. Um, I'm in it. I see myself growing and developing as a teacher and being a part of this school community and I we have a kind of an institution of English teachers in our department some have become admin others have just worked as in so many leadership positions within the school to make our department what it is and I really want to be a part of that institution um, and I never thought that it would be a conversation that I would leave my entire family is you know, 45 minutes away my husband's entire family is 45 minutes away but as we start talking about kids and the reality of living here. I think we we th always thought that we would have owned a home at this point. I have been saving pennies since I was a child being, you know, ready for this. And even with, I mean, I'm very grateful for my salary, the compensation we make as we get as teachers at Los Altos High is incredible. But even though I'm very grateful for it, it, it isn't enough to live here. And so we're just now starting to have the conversation of what might happen in the coming years. Oh, I really do think these affordable housing issues are issues for all of us. I mean, look, even if you're already well housed or affordably housed, you care about the quality of life in your community. You care about the tax base. You care about the economic vitality that allows you to have great parks and good streets and solid schools. And all of that depends on the ability to attract and retain a workforce and without workforce housing, you've got no workforce and that economic vitality and that tax base is at risk. So, uh, you know, there's a very practical reason in that regard to care. Uh, beyond that, I think, uh, you know, any one of us who's stuck in traffic, and that's pretty much all of us, you, you know, has to say, where did these people come from? And the answer is uh, they came from someplace an hour and a half to two hours away. And, uh, you know, they're driving halfway to Helen Gone to get to work and they're wishing that they were only five or ten minutes away from work just like you are. And you know what that means is that the traffic we complain about is the traffic we've created by telling those folks they can't be part of our community. And then, you know, finally, I also think it's not just an economic vitality or traffic issue, it's a public safety issue. Because we live in a place where there are fires and floods and earthquakes. And the next time we have one of those, we're gonna want people there to help keep us safe. And if the folks who keep us safe, whether it's a cop or a firefighter or a nurse, or a PG&E lineman, or uh, you know, just somebody who's got the keys to the building, uh, isn't there because we've priced them out of our neighborhoods. Um, we're going to be at risk. So for all those practical reasons, but you know, finally, I would just say, I think most of us really want to live in communities where we feel a sense of neighborliness and where the people we interact with on a daily basis aren't strangers to us. I, I think we'd like to be able to call somebody by the first name, have them call us by our first name. I think we want our teachers to feel like they're part of the fabric of the community and really invested and that they understand the pressures or the challenges of a particular community that a kid is facing every day before they come to school. So it's a kind of a Norman Rockwell old fashioned notion of community, but I think it's something actually people are really hungry for these days uh, and it ought to be a, another reminder of why affordable housing isn't just an issue for somebody else, it's an issue for all of us.
we're thinking about moving to Morgan Hill, which is gonna be a very substantial commute. I think that we're just going to have to cope with an hour plus commute for each of us just so that we can feel like we can call someplace home. And that's really what we want. We want to call someplace home. Would we like to call this area home? Absolutely. I wanna to continue to work for Los Altos because I love the district. And it may mean that I commute an hour, 10 minutes just to get there so that I can have that piece of stability in my life.